The Millennium Development Goals, among other things, aims at halving by 2015 the proportion of people without sustainable access to safe drinking water and basic sanitation. For ABAM in Arojuku and Ohafia, local government areas of Abia, that reality is very remote. The people have no option but to drink contaminated water from streams. Our community report looks at the plight and pains of the people in these two areas of the state. Now you're talking. This is Abam, a suburb of Arochuku local government area of Abia State. The people here are known for their agricultural prowess, especially in the production of large commercial quantities of gari, a staple food in Nigeria. But the sad reality of life today in this community is that there is water everywhere, but none to drink. Residents have to trek long distances over bad terrain to get water from streams that could pass for ponds. No, another place where we go go fresh water. Only this one where we get. We need help from government to provide means of getting enough water. They have become so resigned to their situation that they even have a nickname for the water. They, this water before, it has no color, it has no taste. But our, uh, our village uh, union said that they should come and do water catchment. Uh, after doing water catchment, this water turned like this. Because all this leaf poor here, it will not go out again. You see the color is not good again. It's like Lipton. Do you drink it? We drink it. How can we do? We are drinking it. It's almost the same scenario in Ohofia. But here, the water tankers siphon the water from the river to supply to the community and its environs. We don't have any what any means we can get water. But the local government, the state and the federal, they have not found any way of giving us water except this water. An individual owned borehole. We are calling government, both the state, federal and local government to help us. Though far from suitable, the water serves a wide variety of purposes. But it is the people's health that is constantly on the line. These children were born into it. There's a water project scheme which, according to the residents, has been abandoned for years. The water board is under lock and key. No sign of any work going on. The residents are appealing to government to intervene. Anambra Imo River Development Basin Authority. And since then, we don't know what is going on about the water project. It has been abandoned over 25 years, and we've been looking for help. Honestly, we don't have any potable drinking water here. We go to the local stream, and the water is not good. All the whole stream we have here, all, all of them are almost the same thing. We don't have a good water at all. But I think uh, 1979, up to this day, the water has not run. We have been telling all stories. Any administration that comes, they will abandon it. It seems relief may be coming their way after all, as some concerned members of the communities have promised to look into the situation. Abia as a whole entirely has 19 water schemes within this frame of time to make sure the water comes to the people. We are going to go all up. We are going to appeal to people, it can be on charity, even on commercial basis, to come and invest. Uh, we we'll see as much as possible what we can do to make sure these projects are realized. A step taken and a promise made. The people of Abam and Ohofia are waiting to see if these promises will be translated into action and hoping it will not be like many of the government's broken promises. Now you're 
The Central Bank of Nigeria, the CBN, says that it is worried about the increase in trafficking of huge sums of foreign currency across the nation's borders. A statement issued by the Director of Public Communications of the CBN, Mr. Ibrahim Moazu, says that this practice is in defiance of the extant dictates of Section 2, Subsection 3 to 5 of the Money Laundering Act 2011 as amended, which categorically states that the transportation of cash or negotiable instruments in excess of 10,000 US dollars or its equivalent by individuals in or out of the country shall be declared to the Nigerian Customs Service. Section 2, subsection 3 to 5 also states, quote, the Nigerian Customs Service shall report any declaration made pursuant to subsection 3 of this section to the Central Bank of Nigeria, end of quote. Or the law adds that any person who falsely declares or fails to make a declaration to the Nigerian Customs Service is guilty of an offence and shall be liable to conviction to forfeit the undeclared funds or negotiable instrument or to imprisonment to terms of not less than two years or both. The statement goes on to say that upon receipt of any notice of declaration from the Nigerian Customs Service, the CBN will investigate the source of the funds and seek justification for the possession of such a volume of cash to ensure that no money laundering activity is involved. The Niger Delta Development Commission, the NDDC, has handed over 522 bed space prototype, uh, photo, phototype rather, to University of Uyo Teaching Hospital in Akwaibom State. Performing the handover ceremony, the Akwaibom State Governor, Mr. Emmanuel Odom, commended the NDDC for the state-of-the-art hostels, which is expected to help ease the accommodation problems facing the medical students in the school. This is the University of Uyo Teaching Hospital in Akwaibom. Traditional rulers, students, Niger Delta youths, and others are all gathered here to witness the commissioning of the just completed 522 bed space hospital for medical students in the state. Arriving at the event is the managing director of NDDC and his team. The rain couldn't deter the deputy governor of the state, Mr. Moses Igbo. And without wasting time, the event kicked off with the deputy governor's speech. The capacity of this university's teaching hospital to train more doctors under livable environment is enhanced. And this will, at the long run, bring about greater efficiency in healthcare delivery in our Kwaibom state and the country at large. The vice chancellor of the university applauded the commission saying it will open up employment for the people in the state. This project will bring development nearer Akwaibom State, nearer the university community in particular, and the people of Niger Delta region at large. With the establishment of this hostel and commissioning today, it makes the training of these students much easier. Notwithstanding the financial challenges facing the country, the Commission is determined to complete all ongoing projects. We have a mandate that is spelled out in the NDDC Act, and of course, the directive of the federal government that emphasis should be on completing all ongoing projects. Time for the commissioning and inspection of the hostel. The walk still continues as they moved on to Ikarakani Bekwe Akpaninya in Ikarabasi, in Pioneer, local government area of the state, to commission the road. The students can now study comfortably in their room and the rehabilitation of the road linking Akwaibom, Rivers, Cross River and even Benue State will assist neighboring communities get to their various destinations easily. Outstanding Tier 2 lender Skybank PLC has rolled out a new television and radio commercial tailored with a motivational message for the Nigerian youth. The commercial, which is also a complimentary campaign for the bank's acquisition project, was launched in Lagos with a focus on retail banking. Channel's television's correspondent, Temple Asaju, reports.
It's a Skybank parlor with brand journalists, and our attention is on the lender's latest phenomenon, a new TV commercial with a touch of contemporary music and inspirational lyrics. With some of the cast members in the commercial present, the executive director corporate services, Abimbola Izu, sets the ball rolling by analyzing the advert in relation to the bank's upgrading technology and acquisitions project. Everything of, of legacy main, main street bank has been fully integrated into Skybank before the acquisition. We had made very strategic investment in cutting edge technology. The 60-second commercial stars Nigerian award-winning hip-hop artist, Ice Prince. But Skybank stresses that the campaign is not a celebrity endorsement. We want to remember the days of, uh, of your, our days of humble beginning. And that's why we, we have chosen people who are proud of the days of their humble beginning who would want to share that to inspire others because in Skybank is optimistic that the motivational commercial will not only impact on its customers but also drive traffic to its retail products. We want to bring a message of hope, a message of confidence and assurance that there is a bank that is listening and that is uh, waiting to support them. It doesn't matter what their dreams are. I just hope that the message is passed across clearly and people um, get where we're coming from and get the actual theme behind the, the campaign. It's not just about us turning up on, you know I mean, trying to tell our story. We're actually trying to change lives with the stories and stuff. The music, you'll be able to connect with the young ones emotionally. And if they give you the emotions, it's easy for them to identify with you and then to begin to see you as your partner. And that's the whole idea. We all know how the I Wish campaign, Hakuna Matata and everything. So at present, we live in a contemporary world and we believe strongly that as a brand, we need to really align with what the society expects. Can't you see? The commercial features Ice Springs narrating the stories of persevering youth who pursue their dreams to reality. The advert is built to go viral from Monday. Temple Ashaju, Channel Television News. And now to the arts. My Street Economics is an art exhibition by Zainabu Jalu, which celebrates the joy and complexities attached to womanhood. The artist is not here to explain her art, but the curator, Aderile Sunariwo, at Rele Gallery, Lagos, does the honors. On Art Review tonight, we we'll look at My Street Economics and the celebration of the woman folk. This exhibition is by Zena Bujalo, titled My Street Economics. What she had done over the course of two years was go around to different cities and, st um, and states all around the country, all around Nigeria, capturing women, you know, on and about, you know, making a living or in their environment. And so she came up with this exhibition that celebrates these women. The freelance writer, scriptwriter, and playwright combines her literary talent with photography. With each image, there's a, sort of like a text that accompanies each image. So what she had done was also interview the two men, sort of get um, their take on their trade, and then also sort of, but then she had translated it into her own way because she's a poet, so she translated it, um, and so you see each image has a really beautiful text around it. The images show women engaging in different endeavors, with the artist writing out what she imagines could be their thoughts at that point. And from the looks and the words, one could be tempted to believe she's spot on. The curator of this exhibition shed more light on this and the other works being exhibited. In the other space, um, it, it's, we sort of like continued in the transition of, um, in, in showcasing women. And so you see um, a, 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 a painting of Yoruba women on a festive day. Women are indeed a very special breed. And next on the news at 10, Sacked Super Eagles coach Stephen Cashy says that he is in the bind as to why he was removed from office.
That's in a moment. Stay with us.